And um, Matt, if you're ready, I think we're ready to get going. Cool. You guys see my screen okay? Looks good here. Cool. All right, well, um, hello everybody. Happy Friday. I hope you're uh, safe wherever you are. Um, I'm working out of my home office in Wilmington, um, North Carolina today. Got a little forecast of snow, but it's absolutely nothing out there. Um, so it's about normal. Um, I am uh, Matt Fowler, if I didn't say that already. I'm director of MLS services for a company called Tribus. Uh, Tribus bought Solid Earth uh, from FBS, another prop tech company, about a year ago. Uh, a lot of movement uh, around that product. Uh, but the spring product is a um, is a consumer portal that uh, the Charlottesville Association there has used for a really long time. Uh, we are in MLS is all over the country. Our largest um, market in terms of traffic is probably the New England system. That's Narin.com. Um, we also um, have a big presence in Dallas, Indianapolis, <coughs> the state of Maine. Uh, so what we focus on doing is providing a consumer property search experience um, that also includes a, a blog tool that the MLS or association can use to communicate with the general public to talk about why they should use a professional in the transaction. Um, and it includes property search because consumers won't go there if there's not uh, pictures of houses to look at. Uh, so um, what we do is we put a property search uh, together that is entirely based on each MLS's local rules for display, IDX, VOW, et cetera. Um, and we try and interrupt the, the lead flow or the, the connection that's happening out there every day on the internet uh, between consumers that are looking for um, houses and you guys, the uh, listing brokers and agents and the buyer reps. Uh, so our job is to um, interrupt some of that lead flow that's happening. Uh, and um, uh, we do that with the mycar.com site. And I use the word interrupt because we understand that we're not going to take it over. Uh, but every uh, consumer that we can um, connect to you as a member benefit is one that you don't have to go buy uh, from lead gen sites. So... Um, what we're doing is is promoting the site as uh, as much as we can and helping the the uh, local leadership in Charlottesville do that by doing things like uh, building in um, these popularity we refer to it as the popularity panel in the middle there that's a constantly updated list of the most commonly searched municipalities within each county so these are sorted by the number of listing detail page views. Um, each uh, each day. I think they're actually updated a few times a day. Uh, and there's an agent search and there's an embedded uh, um, YouTube video and the most recent tweet. Uh, this is all on the landing page and is all uh, scanned by the Google crawler every day looking for uh, local authentic content, which is precisely what you guys uh, produce every day. And that gets us pretty high on Google search uh, lists. If you Google your own name, uh, you'll see mycar.com's profile on the first or second page, almost certainly. Um, so the entire reason for this thing to be here, and I was doing some testing before and I'm logged in, so I just logged out. Uh, the entire reason for this website to be here at all is uh, so that we can have a consumer uh, find a property like this one and call Carrie. That's the only reason that we really uh, you know, intend this site to exist. All the other stuff and features and things that I'll show you, I'm going to show you a few different things just to make sure you know how to use it. But I want to start with this because it's the most important. Uh, Keller Williams Alliance there at the top um, is the, the uh, listing brokerage. Uh, they've designated Kerry as the listing agent. Uh, there can be listing agent or agents depending on your rules. And we always put those people at the very top of the page and this form is the way that consumers connect with us. And we do a couple of different things with this form. Um, we have a, a, a CAPTCHA tool that makes sure that this isn't spam. And we're pretty good at keeping spam out of your inbox. If you do see one, let us know. 
Uh, so a consumer is going to fill this out and hit, I'm not a robot and send a message. And that will allow them to say, you know, Hey, Carrie, um, actually, Hey, Keller Williams Alliance. Uh, I want to go see this property. Um, or, you know, uh, is the master on the downstairs or something. They want to ask a question. So what we do is we send the, the inquiry to the brokerage and the brokerage decides what should happen after that. And the broker's options are, and as the agents, I don't know if we have brokers with us today, uh, you need to understand what these, what the options are, because we've tried to make them as, as, um, as broad as possible to let the brokerage put, you know, their business model into this workflow. Uh, so they um, uh, can send the, the, the inquiry directly to Carrie and leave it with Carrie and take no further action. It's just an email that goes to Carrie. Um, and that's the end of it. Uh, the broker also has the option to let other agents in the office back up Carrie. If Carrie's distracted or out of town or busy, um, the broker can set a timer that says, Carrie, you have an hour to, um, uh, to click. Um, I've got it in the email that we send you to tell you someone has asked a question about this listing on the website. And if you don't answer within that period of time, uh, it goes, it's visible to all the other agents at Keller Williams Alliance that the broker has indicated to us should receive those. So the broker can make that one person or a hundred people at their discretion. Uh, and then finally, if the brokerage has a, um, has a CRM that you use already, I know Keller Williams does, uh, then you have a parser email address that the CRM gives you. It's like your account number at boomtown.com or something. Uh, and that email address can be put into the system so that the lead doesn't come into the mycar.com system at all. We bounce it off into whatever CRM you might be using. Uh, so that's those are the three options that the brokers have uh, to manage these leads. But you'll see them coming into your inbox from mycar.com. And when you see those, and I if you're a, a sales agent or a listing agent, rather, uh, you should search your inbox for mycar.com and make sure that's whitelisted because these are email verified leads that are real people coming in off of the website uh, that are asking you questions about these houses. Um, and I'm gonna go to the, to the back of the site just a second. And in order not to show some poor agents actual prospects in Charlottesville, uh, and get myself in trouble. I'm going to go up to the Naren website in New England, and I'm going to um, I'm going to log in. Did you guys get to see the live television here? Hope I don't screw it up. Um, I'm going to log in as a broker on the back end. There we go. Uh, so that I can show you what the lead, what the broker sees, and what the lead system looks like. So if a uh, if a um, if a consumer asks a question, it's going to show up in your spring inbox in the My Leads uh, tab here, and there it's blank. And if um, if you if the listing agent doesn't answer within the specified period of time, it'll be in the second tab under Office Leads. So these are if you see anything when you're logged in uh, to Spring uh, as in this Office Leads tab. It means that this is a consumer that's asked a question, the listing agent hasn't answered in the broker specified period of time, and you can answer for them if you see something in office leads. Uh, you'll see a leads report that you can run that will show you, um, to go back a little in time, that will show you uh, um, information about the leads. And I've really picked a good person here to do this demo on. Uh, but the leads report, for your leads will show you uh, when they came in, how long it took you to uh, pick them up, what property they ask about. Uh, that's just where your people live. <laughs> and this is the, uh, the office settings that the brokers get to set, those three options that we talked about. So if you're logged into to the spring system and you don't see office settings over here, it just means you're not uh, identified in our system as the broker that has the ability to change those settings. If you do see those, then you are the broker or the office manager or affiliated with them. 
Um, okay, so that's basically leads. I'm gonna bounce back over to the car system and show you um, back at the start page, just a couple of basic things about the site. Then I'm gonna be quiet in about five or 10 minutes and let you guys ask questions. Uh, so a um, very brief look at the basic features of the site include this um, very quick search here and an expandable search. The expandable one is um, uh, based on property category. So as you change the property category, your options uh, that you have uh, on which to search are uh, changed by the fields in that one. And you've got some pretty good ones. It's cool that you can search by your green um, features and your um, uh, bandwidth. That's pretty cool. If you go through to a search, you go to this page we refer to generically as search results. And on the search result page, a few things to point out is you've got the uh, property category based advanced search here on the left again, which will change which fields you can search on based on what property category you pick. And um, you'll note also that there are some fields over here that show up um, when you're logged in as a member that don't show up when you're uh, not logged in or logged in as a consumer, you get a good bit more access to the MLS data set logged in as a member than you do as a consumer. I mainly tell you that to make sure that when you, um, if you see a field that you don't think should be there because this is the public site, it probably means you're logged in. And there are three ways to look at listings. We have a list view, a map view, and the map view features our new uh, Google Maps integration. And um, um, that's not Google, uh, Apple Maps integration. And I wanna point this out because it's kind of hidden. Is you have the ability to do um, the uh, FEMA flood hazard overlays. So we're actually gonna hit the live FEMA mapping site, zoom in to make this useful and pull the live flood maps right off the FEMA web portal. Just take a moment to load sometimes because this is live off the theme of site. But you'll see that they'll uh, those zones will show up next to these water boundaries. This is also where you can um, draw polygons on the map and search that way. And the gallery view is just the one that has all the pictures in it. It's too wide at the moment, and you have a new version of this, um, this web look and feel that I'm gonna show you at the end of our call today that lets you have a, a instead of being two columns, it stretches to the screen size. Uh, so if you click through on, um, yeah, if you click through on one of these properties, you get what we refer to as the listing detail page. Uh, on the listing detail page, advanced search is still up, up at the top. So you get the thing that was on the left in search results. Uh, and you also have a previous and next that lets you take from take you to the next listing in the search result order. And on the um, on the top of the listing detail photo, uh, it's set to images, but has a map option as well. And the map option features our new uh, integration with local logic, which lets you enter a work address perhaps, and it will give you persistent commute time uh, to the listing that you've selected and where the where they work or school or something, as well as these, uh, these scores for uh, walkability, uh, the ability, for example, to pull up the uh, closest grocery store. So this is something that consumers use quite a bit from our web tracking. Okay, and there are a few more integrations down here. There's an integration with um, uh, these, uh, well, Google ads that we're seeing. And let me make a comment about the ads that you're seeing. Uh, we place ads on the site only for anonymous people. So never for consumers that have connected with you as a member, just for uh, people that haven't engaged with the site at all. And that revenue uh, goes uh, substantially back to CAR. We have a 70-30 revenue share agreement where we take a 30% commission, basically how we pay for these sites. And um, 
uh, return the bulk of that revenue, seventy percent, back to the back to the customer or car in this case. And our recommendation, although we certainly can't, you know, speak into your bylaws or anything, our recommendation is to use that for digital ad buys and content creation to further promote the brand and hopefully further interrupt that lead cycle with uh, member benefit generated leads. Okay, um, I'm gonna do one more thing, which is to show you uh, what this uh, orange button means and how collections work. And then I am really, I'm gonna be quiet and let you ask questions. Um, so we went over the lead thing pretty thoroughly and that's just what happens when you fill out this form. Uh, but if you're a consumer and you've asked a question about this property and it's gone to carry, um, you, and you're going to ask a question about the next property, you would like to um, um, uh, probably, if you're like most people, and I'm going to explain that in a second too, uh, not want to ask a question to a second agent uh, or a third or fifth agent because you're going to have all those people contacting you. And um, if you know, for example, Shannon, uh, you can click work with this agent and it'll make you log in and identify yourself as not a, a, not a uh, uh, bot. Uh, but once you push the work with this agent button, then any uh, inquiries about this property or any subsequent property the consumer might ask about would go to Shannon. So we, with that orange button, create a one-to-one uh, -one connection between the consumer and Shannon for all future use of mycar.com by that consumer until they disconnect from that relationship at some point at their option. So it forms what's essentially a VOW um, or in some markets an IDX relationship, but a one-to-one a -one relationship between the consumer and that person. Um, and the, the reason that when I click forward to carry here and to Shannon, of course, of course, I'm not gonna get one. Uh, the listings that were showing up a minute ago, um, without a listing agent over there were from the data share. So if you see a listing that shows up without a listing brokerage and a, or a listing agent, it's because it came in from the uh, bright data share. All right. I think that takes me to a point where I've shown you what I wanted to show you. I mentioned collections. But while I'm going to do that, let's um, let you guys see if you have any questions for me. I don't see any in chat. Can I ask you a question? Please. Out loud instead of putting in chat. Um, as you're showing the site and what it can do, it seems to me, so correct me if I'm misunderstanding the, the whole objective of the site here, but it seems to me that really favors listing agents mm -hmm. um, and not what would be, let's say, a primarily buyer representative. I mean, especially with that work with agent button, now a listing agent becomes, in essence, potentially a buyer agent. And the, because the other thing I noticed is when you go to find an agent, let's say you have somebody who's from out of town, but they know they want to live in Charlottesville or wherever, and they go to find an agent, when, when they pick somebody and it says view so-and-so's activity, nothing is listed there unless you have a uh, listing. That's so- a fantastic question, Kathleen. I think that was a comment and a question. And I think I yes. have a response to that. Um, okay. so, so we built these, um, these agent profile pages specifically for that reason. Um, so if, uh, you are a, um, a buyer rep. Um, you have the ability with the spring site to put um, a link to this page, which is your spring profile, and a link directly to this agent button. If you, if you right click that and copy the link address, you can actually put this as a link in your email, in your marketing, on your web page, and get consumers to click that, register with you. And then this site becomes an, a, a buyer reps IDX site uh, with all the listings um, searchable and savable and forwardable all by the consumer. And every subsequent contact of, uh, for any of those listings, once this person is registered with you as their buyer rep, go to you, not to the listing agent. 
So we we specifically built the work with this agent button on the on the um, end of the profiles so that buyer reps can take advantage of that set feature. But let me, let think, me add uh, one yeah, more comment, yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, I don't know, you, we may have to look up some one of you maybe, uh, but there is a switch based on your rules that allows me to put your prior um, um, transaction sides where we represented the buyer on this page to show your activity. If we're allowed to show off market data, then that shows up here. So I don't see it on there. Does that mean it's not permitted by car or? Here it is. Oh, those are actives. It may be that it's not permitted by car. That's maybe an Elizabeth question we'd have to answer later. But they, they it shows up just like this. <laughs> These are actives, but it wouldn't be actives, obviously. It would be, it, I think the label actually says um, um, represented in the sale, or represented no. the buyer. It actually says your, which side of the transaction you were on. But it would show all of the all of your sides uh, as if we're allowed to show off markets. Can you check on that to see if it is possible? Because the buyer sides are not showing. It's only if you have listings. I can actually check that right now. Okay. I just have to remember where it is. There we go. That appears to be enabled to me. That means I need to check it. That would be good. And I'm assuming because um, to about two years ago, when I clicked on my own name, I could have no service areas. And when I spoke to somebody at CAR then, they said the service areas were filled in by you guys based on activity. That's but I've seen, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, um, there's a, and it's based on these sides where we're looking at the uh, postal services official name for the zip codes where you had sides. That's where that list comes from. So that really favors existing agents and not anyone trying to break well, in. How well do they for, do that? <laughs> they would well never for, be found. I mean, any transaction you've ever, we can only show the transactions you've been involved in. So it would be the seller or buyer sides of any transaction you've been involved in. Right. So if you've well, never been involved in any, any agent, transaction, though. right, if you've never been involved in any transaction, then that's going to be blank. Right. Yep, that's absolutely true. And those are optional to show those or not. We don't have to put those on there. You don't we have can to put take them there. off. Yeah, the service areas. We can take those off for everybody if that's not something that the that the committee wants to do. No, I think people would want them. It's just that, well, I've already I made my it. point. But if you yeah, can check on the buyer it. side, that would be good because they're not showing up right now. Thanks. The, yeah, the the the, the off market transactions on the profiles. I agree with that. Actually, I'm logged in. I don't think that would change anything. Yeah. All right. I'll look into that. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, and stop me if you've already covered this, but if I, and maybe this isn't the right tool for this, but if I'm trying to share a property with a client and mm -hmm. I'm not the listing agent, but I just am trying to share the property, if I, is there a way to do that so that my contact information shows back up or are they going to be subject to seeing only the listing agent or does, yeah, do, you you, know, do you see what I'm asking? Yeah, absolutely, Virginia. And I think um, I'm not entirely sure the, the, um, the easiest way to do it. There are a few ways to do it. And let me just show you a couple of things. The, the first thing is to send them a link from your profile and tell them to connect with you as their agent. And then every link you send to them will be an IDX link. And those are the links that show up under my profile, like the alias yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. And on any listing. Uh, but if you just look up your name in the, in the, um, 
and find an agent. We can just do that. Uh, uh, do you want me to? <laughs> uh, there we go. Well, it's, it's yeah. Good. So that link right there. Here. Sure. So okay. if you send them that thing, um, the profile Leary 15185, um, and and Thank they'll you. open basically this page, and tell them to click on the orange button and register with CAR, and then everything you send them will have an IDX relationship, or it's still going to brand like it has to, you know, the name of the brokerage at the bottom, but mm -hmm. your name is on it, the contact form goes to you, that's a good way to do that. And another way to do that, and you this may be preferable, uh, but once you're logged in, if you have a property uh, that you want to send to them, let's say it's this one I keep using, um, you can save this property. Where am I going? Save property. Ask your daughter about your body. It's back here. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, we can save this property to a profile or a, collect, a collection, rather. And I'm going to call this customer name. Okay, so I've just created a collection that's in this collection list. This one's called customer name. So it's a shopping cart that you can have lots of properties in. And um, and you look at the distribution of those properties on the map and stats about those properties. Uh, you can compare properties one to another in kind of a grid. And there's also this invite button. So you click invite, you can put in, uh, you know, uh, um, two partners that, you know, want to participate in a home search, um, you know, somebody's mom wants to see what houses are showing up in the list. You put their email addresses in this invite others list uh, and they'll get updates about changes to the pro to the houses in the, in the collection. And it's a great way to share. And the thing that you, you know, that you could share that URL, which is a, um, just the name of the collection and a, and a code. Uh, but there is an invite others button that lets you send a nice email to them that says it's from my car and they can uh, join this home search by using the collections. So there's a couple of ways to do that. You can send them the register first and then any anything you would just grab, you know, up off the URL and send to them, as long as they're as they're logged in, it's gonna uh, it's gonna direct their inquiries back to you. Matt, how is that different from the uh, Paragon collaborative sites that you can set up for a potential buyer? Yeah, this this is completely duplicative of all of that, right? The the uh, consumer, what's that? What are they calling that now? The um, some snap. No, no, no. It's a collaborative site yeah, that you set up on center. the MLS. Yeah. Yeah, the new collaboration center of Paragon is really cool, and it does a bunch of stuff that this doesn't do. Um, you know, the way I look at this is, um, I use the word interrupt a bunch. Uh, this site gets a lot of traffic and a lot of people come in here and, you know, I just look before the, um, for the call and we send right now dozens of email verified leads to the membership every month. And some people are going to find you guys and in your inventory through this uh, website. Some of, some people are going to find you through Zillow or wherever they do that. Um, what we want to do is, if somebody finds you through the car site, we want to continue to service them through the user interface that they chose. So if this is the site that the consumer finds is the useful one, uh, then we want to give you an easy way to talk back to them in a, you know, through a UI that, they'll un that they will understand. Uh, you know, I think it's, if I was a practitioner and I was a heavy user of the collaboration center, and I, I think that makes sense, um, or you're a heavy user of Boomtown or top producer or something that you've invested a lot of time in, then I don't want to drag you off of those things uh, into this. I want to push uh, registrations that come through here out into those things. So, you know, talk to your broker if those aren't doing that today. Um, uh, but I would probably, if, if I get an inquiry through this and I'm a heavy user of the collaboration center, I would probably tell that consumer, hey, look, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to send you an email from my professional thing that I use. Uh, thanks for contacting me. And we're going to talk through this thing from now on. And I would probably do that just to get them all in one place. So um, I think that probably gets us through the content that I wanted to cover today. It's just um, most of this is, you know, a consumer portal and designed to be stupid, easy to use. If I have to explain very much, then we just did it wrong. Um, but one of our sites um, uh, in Naren that has been up for so long, um, I could tell you some more stats about our top performing sites. And then I want to show you uh, what your site is going to be changing over to. Uh, there's a new uh, theme that um, Allie and uh, the staff uh, with Elizabeth there have been working on at the board office. And it's going to look something like this thing. So this is uh, the New England Real Estate Network. It gets 42 million page views a year. Something like a thousand leads per month go into the membership, not a few dozen. Although this is statewide Vermont and New Hampshire, 26 associations all under one common MLS system. So it's a, like 10,000 realtors, about 10x your membership. Uh, so um, I'm showing you this so you'll see what, what your next one's about to look like. Uh, just same thing, just sort of reformatted to be uh, uh, a little more responsive, a little more uh, updated looking. All right. Uh, did I hear any more questions out there? There's something in chat. Okay. Whoever is it? Muted. Please mute. Sorry about There's that. I'm not about... sure if I can do that. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I was going to do that myself, but I don't think I can. <laughs> well, um, I think we are near the end of our content anyway. Uh, so if I don't hear any more questions, um, I, hear, I see your question I a about question. it. Yeah, shoot. Um, I placed this in the chat earlier, uh, but it wasn't the B, addressed. The uh, link. The, well, you you addressed bandwidth, um, and I, I'd like oh, to right. know where you pulled that information from. Is it because the listing agent put it in the listing information or something mm -hmm. that you pull from about that location in that county? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And I'm... Um, um, this is coming from the agent, the listing agent. Okay. I know that we do, that's a field that you have on your input forms. Right. Uh, so the filters yeah, so, that the buyer or the buyer's agent creates in the search are dependent on what the listing agent has actually put in the form. Yeah, yeah that's that's true, good and bad. Um, yes, that is true. There are there there is there's only one exception that I can think of, and um, it's the green features, uh, where we actually pull data from a third party to tell us if that parcel has a registered solar array or a registered loan. Uh, for uh, energy efficient, like geothermal or something. There is a national registry for that. And Virginia uh, has uh, decent coverage compared to most states. And we subscribe to that registry um, and pull that into the collection. I think Charlottesville is actually the first place we did that a few years ago. That's the only exception though, for any field that I can think of, that every field comes from you guys, except I think, um, the green fields, but I, we're not pulling fiber coverage from anywhere. We are talking to Google about that right now in the triangle, um, but we're currently not doing that anywhere. Like, you know, comparing their map to our map or something, we're not doing that yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that information. My second question um, refers back to work with agent um, mm -hmm. icon. So if a buyer's agent has a client that they're working with and they haven't properly 
educated them about always disclosing that they're working with that agent. Mm -hmm. If they are searching on their own on the car site and happen to click the work with this agent icon, they are now being assigned to that agent, correct? The one that they picked, that's right. Okay. I see a potential for a conflict between that agent and the buyer's agent that has documentation that they are their buyer's agent. Absolutely. Yes. I'm sure yes. that happens with some frequency. Okay. And this well, is really about education, you know, to tell your customer that this is the, you know, the digital representation of their connection to you. And if they want to work with you and not be uh, inundated with calls from every agent in the world, they need to find you on the roster and connect with you online if they're going to use this site. Okay. And that could happen at Zillow or anywhere else where you have, you know, contact a listing agent or something. Correct. So my second part of that question um, is linked to this. So if we are in contacts and we've put um, our, our buyer client in contacts and set up a search for them, does the work with this agent icon still populate when they're on a search that we've created for them? No. Once they're registered, it doesn't show up ever again um, unless they disconnect from you at some point. Okay. Uh, but as long as they're connected with you, and we, we do this with cookies and stuff, so uh, it, it logs them back in if they come back on, um, onto the site. We make it kind of easy to stay with the person that they connected with okay. in the first place. Uh, yeah, so all subsequent inquiries go to the person they originally um, connected with. They can log in and go to um, settings and my agent, and there's what we call the divorce button. Uh, it just says, I don't want to work with this agent anymore, and they can do that at any point. Somebody asked a question about uh, when the new system is supposed to come out, and that is up to Charlottesville. Um, I think... Um, yeah, I was going to try to show it to you, but I think I will wait. It's the same thing that you saw now, but with just new photos and an updated look. And I would, I think we're ready. It's probably weeks, not months, I think is how I would answer that. Thank you for then, the clarification. Yeah, of course. There is an entirely new one, a new version of the site that we're um, about to release in Aspen and I think Baton Rouge. Uh, that you will eventually be moving to too. So this is a new, new one. Uh, and it's going to be coming out probably late summer, early fall this year in our first market. And we'll probably introduce this to you guys in about a year. So your new theme will be up about a year and then we'll probably move to a new, new one about a year from now. This is even newer and it's got a bunch of new things in it that we think you'll like. So lots of new uh, options coming down the down the line. This is a staging site, so it's pretty slow. Lots of development going on at uh, at Solid Earth these days, uh, but we'll be working closely with Elizabeth and Allie, and I think we uh, found some things we need to research, like the profiles. I'm going to go hang up with you guys and call my project manager and see what that's all about, and let them know and let you guys know, and they'll. Um, Hopefully, maybe email everybody that was on this call and our post people so you'll know what's going on. And then we'll maybe have something to tell the membership about that. But we'll see. All right. Thanks for your time today, everybody. Um, Elizabeth, do you have anything for me or uh, we'll wrap this up? No, I think we're good. Thanks for, okay. thanks for all the info. Thanks, you guys. Make sure to whitelist us in your spam and you don't miss a lead from us. Thanks very much. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thanks for thanks for joining.